Hi, I'm here today with Jeremy Swanson. We're here to discuss uh, child arrears and uh, child support payments and what happens when uh, you get behind in your payments or uh, you know, what kind of interest rates can apply and things like that. So Jeremy, what are the common problems that people can, number one, avoid, and number two, what are the pitfalls and things that uh, people should watch out for? Well, Matt, with child support arrears, nobody likes surprises and there are quite a few ways that you can get yourself in trouble with arrears. One thing to keep in mind is that the legal rate of interest on arrears is 10%, so that can add up pretty fast if you get behind. But here are some of the most common ways of getting into trouble with child support arrears. One way is to fail to file a motion to change your support when you have a job change. It can be either an income change or a loss of job, a period of unemployment. If you don't ask the court to change your support or give you a temporary uh, stay of the support order, the support order continues to accrue at the exact same rate that's in the order. The order always controls, so if you don't ask the court to change or modify your support, it, it doesn't happen automatically. So whenever you have any kind of a major change in your life, you need to ask the court to change the support order. Another common problem that happens with child support is agreements between parties. And courts encourage parties to make agreements, and that can include making modifications of support when appropriate. Uh, parties have access to the DISMaster program. They can see what child support should be, and oftentimes people work it out informally without going to court. That is fine as long as you put that into a stipulation. The order doesn't actually change officially unless you sign a document and have the judge sign it stating what the new amount is, when it begins, and is actually entered into the court file. If you don't do that, you run the risk of going back to court at some point and the party who initially agreed to a, a change saying, that's not the actual order, I didn't agree to that. Then you have a proof issue of what the agreement actually was, and it can get really messy. So you always want to put that in writing, put it in a stipulation, and have the court enter it. One of the other problems that happens with support is proof of payment. If you're not paying directly through the Department of Child Support Services, who keep a record of all payments, then you may, in some point in the future, have to prove what payments you actually made. So for that, you want some traceable method. You would be surprised how many people pay cash. And once you pay cash, you've got no record of it if you don't have mm -hmm. a, a receipt of some kind. And even a receipt of some kind, there's always a danger that the other side will say, I didn't sign that receipt, I didn't give that receipt, I didn't receive the money, where's the canceled check? So you always want to pay with some sort of verifiable method, such as a check that you can show it went through your checking account and uh, who cashed the check. If you're using any kind of certified funds, such as a cashier's check, uh, then you want to keep a copy of that so that you can show that you actually paid and keep those records in a file just in case that ever comes up. Okay, well thank you very much. It was very good advice.